What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Coasters Unscripted Podcast. I'm your host, Andrew, from Coaster Thrills, joined by my co-host, Caleb, from Backlot Stunt Coaster Thrills. Caleb, how you doing today? I'm feeling insulted, Andrew, because mm. you just did insulted me there. <laughs> yeah, uh, ba- Backlot Stunt. I, I, I kind of like that ride, don't you? Yes, I do. The upwards helix is forceful, but other than that, it's meandering around. <laughs> yes, but anyways, what is up, guys? Welcome back to the podcast uh we just got back from uh carowinds trip uh it was a, we call it the carol trip that's why we're uh, recording this today we are recording this on a monday so uh let's hope let's hope it is out today but um we're recording this now it's about the morning about uh, 12 in the new uh about noon so uh, recording this now and we got some really cool stuff and funny stories from today uh since we just got back from the trip we got back from the trip last night and it was absolutely fantastic uh we got to uh, go to Carowinds in two days. I got to ride Fury, got some fantastic experiences on Fury night rides, and it really was just a fantastic weekend, and we had so much fun. We obviously have so many stories to tell. Fury night rides, Copperhead night rides. As always, Copperhead is running absolutely insane, and I think about it was just absolutely fantastic. Uh, don't you agree, Caleb? I agree, too, and especially compared to 9 a.m. in the morning to about 10 a.m. or 10 p.m. at night, it really definitely is a completely different experience on those two types of days because we got ERT on Copperhead Strike at 9 a.m. in the morning for an ace event that happened that day which was fantastic as always got to get a backstage tour of Copperhead Strike and yeah. morning ERT yeah <laughs> like we got, got into the ace event uh, ace held a fantastic event uh, there was a lot of uh, enthusiasts there like um, the, like the first day it was Saturday, we got to, of course, do Copperhead ERT, uh, we got seven rides in the morning, got the behind the backstage tour, uh, which y'all be seeing if you want to check on my YouTube channel, uh, there will probably be a video on that, just have to wait and see, uh, and we got the backstage tour, we got so much cool stuff from that, and, uh, we got Last Start of the Night on Fury 325, and with that, like, they did a Last Start of the Night, but then, like, we all chanted one more time, and, you know, knowing how nice and how cool like the uh the carolyn's ops are we got another ride which is absolutely fantastic and it was such a fun trip i mean there'll also be a vlog on this too like you go check that on our channel and also on our instagram that's all of that but we had an absolutely fantastic time all the rides were running absolutely incredible like copperhead strike that was running absolutely fantastic Yes, it was. Definitely towards the end of the night, it was running like I've never, like, I've never experienced Copperhead Strike like that before. It just felt so fantastic, and just the ejector airtime on that, on, like you always say, that final hill before the break run, we call it the death hill, because it literally feels like a death hill. Yeah, like, for me, like, Copperhead Strike was... Like, since last year, like, when we went back on the first annual can- Caro trip, uh, Copperhead Strike was, like, was in my top 25. It's, still, it's definitely staying in my top 25 now. As I've realized, like, every single element on this coaster just does anything you can want. There's so many good elements that are just absolutely fantastic. And one that's running at night, that thing is running so good. It's running so fast, and it feels like a coaster that makes the top 25. Even for me, which, you know, I've ridden, like, 608 coasters, which a feed, that is a feat alone to get into my top 25 so that just really shows you how good copperhead strike was but uh you know we also uh yeah i mean we had so much fun we got footage caleb you didn't really get that much footage i didn't get that much footage but i decided to ride some more than get footage because i felt like i got enough footage to satisfy my instagram account to a certain extent and then yeah and then here i am just uh, I was, you got like three hours worth of footage didn't yeah you, Andrew? yeah like like yesterday like i'm gonna like we were supposed to leave at three i was like hmm i'll leave i left like at 12 30 and i got like i got everything you could possibly ask for in like fury like fury is so photogenic and i got every single angle i mean you'll probably don't care but um so there's all of that and really just carolyn's just even like from where it was like last year this park just even went up just maybe even more in my rankings. Just Carowinds is just so elite. It's such a friendly atmosphere. And everything about it, especially when you're, friend, when you're with friends, was just fantastic. Like, even when we went to Bucky's, I mean, come on. Yeah, Bucky's is a uh, fantastic place to go if you've never been there. 
Uh, it's basically like a Walmart and a gas station, and they have really cheap gas for the for uh, what today's standards are co compared to all the rest of these gas chains that we have today that are like four dollars a gallon for gas. Bucky's was like what three fifty? Yeah, <laughs> like Bucky's has everything you want. I bet you probably already know like what Bucky's is because like. It's so popular now. Like everybody loves Bucky's. It's like a tourist attraction, really. Like everything about Bucky's is just so fantastic. And we got to go to the one in St. Augustine and Daytona. We went there on the way there and on the way back. You know, gotta get the the standard Bucky stuff, like the mints, the popcorn, the pulled pork sandwich, the drinks, the candy. Like, come on, Bucky's is the place to be. We got a whole bunch of those cotton candy mints. Those are delicious. Yeah, and that may not be the best for you, but... <laughs> Just don't eat a lot of them at once, that's what I'll say. Yeah, but they they are so delicious, and everything about Bucky's is just absolutely fantastic, but... Uh, just that we just went on a rant about that trip and it was just fantastic uh what we're probably gonna do is like we're gonna do like an annual caro trip like every year like last year we did it in may and now we just did it in april so mm, i just love carowinds so much everything about that place is fantastic the lineup of coasters is just absolutely fantastic and let's just mention it was freezing cold outside the whole trip so all the coasters were running not to their full potential at some points but at night, even though it was very, very cold, it was not as much as it would run during, say, Haunt. But it still was fantastic to ride Fury at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah, just like, imagine like riding in like on a hot summer. Like, like let's say it's open on July 4th. Let's say it's open till like 12 a.m. and it's a hot summer day, and at night you get to ride Copperhead or Fury. Like those rides would be absolutely insane. Like. Is that would be just absolutely insane. Like I remember, like this past summer, I got night rides on Twisted Timbers, which were just since it was so hot outside, it was just absolutely incredible. Like everything, any coaster like th that you want to ride, like I just, like, I just can't like say it's so, so flipping good. Like and especially in the summer, like those are the best times to ride it. But um, yeah, we just wanted to ramble there. But uh, let's move into to our first segment, which is the news. So for our first seg uh, segment of news, um. It's pretty much all about Dr. Diabolical's cliffhanger, which we have two bit of news for this thing. Um, they just completed the full circuit, which is just crazy. They went so fast with the construction. They completed the full circuit, and they showcased their brand new trains, which just look absolutely incredible. It's going to be super nice, especially since Caleb and I are going to be able to ride that thing this summer. Yes, we are on our Texas trip that we keep talking about on this podcast. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Dr. Diabolicals looks fantastic. It looks like it has some very solid moments of airtime, and those airtime moments are just, especially that like elite ejector hill, or what is it called? The negative G ejector hill, or something like that? Yeah. It's just, I, I, look, I, I could even see it being the best dive coaster. Uh, I, don't th I don't think it will beat Shikra per se, just because of its size. But it does look like it is going to be fantastic and intense. Yeah, I feel like for me, like, it keeps, like, going, like, the hype for it keeps building up and up because it has so many, like, cool elements that, like, some of them you don't even see on other dive coasters. Like, there's that beyond 90-degree drop, which just looks fantastic. You got so many cool other elements. Uh, you got um, that one airtime hill, which looks fantastic, and some more elements to it. But the main thing for me that I think that can make this the best dive coaster, in my opinion at least, is the theming that Six Flags could possibly do with this thing. And especially since um, we'll be riding it during Roller Coaster Rodeo, uh, the experience with that and all everybody and all my friends being there will just makes it will make it so cool. And will make this will probably be my favorite dive coaster by the end. Don't you agree? Uh, I still don't think it'll be yeah. Shikra still, just because again Shikra just has that. Just the hyper coaster height, and I'm trying to convince you. <laughs> I know you're trying to convince me, but and those longer trains on Shikra make it super intense for the for that one Immelman. Uh, it just, I mean, I don't know. It, it'll be tough to tell. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess that kind of makes sense because like on Shikra and Griffin, they do have their old uh, school restraints, which Cliffhanger only has the best restraints, which is definitely not as good. But hopefully, they're a little more forgiving, just like. A uh, Yukon Striker is like I know Val Raven is not the most forgiving, but uh, Yukon Striker was built after, so they are a little more forgiving with that one. But um, there's that. Uh, 
Dr. Diabolical's cliffhanger looks to be an absolutely fantastic dive coaster and a great supporting coaster coming to Six Flags Fiesta, Texas, and really could make that park even better of a park, which I still love that park. It is such a fantastic experience, but, uh, oh, never mind. Uh, what about the trains? <laughs> the trains look stunning. I mean, like, yeah, the Vestra trains, not the best, but, like, the colors and everything about it just look absolutely stunning. Like, they look insane. Yeah, they do look very cool, Andrew. And and how did they do the uh, reveal? Like, I know they just revealed the trains, like, what was it, yesterday or two days ago? They revealed the trains to the public, or to the roller coaster enthusiast public, I should say. But, um, yeah, how did they present it? Yeah, it looked like they, what they pretty much did is, like, they just opened up, like, if slowly the curtain or whatever went up and it looks uh, it was so stunning and i just can't wait for it but uh moving on to uh the next bit of texas um we have codaland which as you all know codaland is a very small uh smaller park that's really like starting to build up like uh and they're located in austin so um in the news part of this in uh i think 2022 right yeah in 2022 they will be getting a vacoma tilt coast or no I think it was 2023 they were getting the Vacoma Tilt Coaster. Oh, yeah. For, this, this year's 2022. I forgot. <laughs> yeah. So they're getting 2022, they're getting Palindrome, and 2023, they're getting this Vacoma Tilt Coaster, which looks awesome. It's not going to be like Gravity Max, like the old Vacoma Tilt Coaster type model where it's just the tilts and then nothing else comes after it. But this is going to have a whole layout after it, which could be a very unique coaster to the u.s yeah i mean like i totally agree uh uh really codaland i feel like codaland could become like the new energy landy of the u.s like depending on what they do like they could just be adding so many coasters left and right and it looks absolutely fantastic and uh, we may just be going here uh this summer i mean hopefully palindrome is open because that thing still looks fantastic but i think it's opening late 2022 in the fall okay so then maybe not but still there's like three credits there so and just maybe we'll be back like 2023 when both of those coasters are possibly just possibly open and i feel like this park could really become something special just like energy landia did but have anything else to say about it yes and i think palindrome definitely looks like a very unique coaster to the united states and definitely is one that we have never seen before so that definitely draws my attention to it yeah it just looks absolutely fantastic but moving on to our next bit of news um we are like still staying in Texas. Uh, coming to Sea World San Antonio, um, as you all know, um, they just added this uh, Scream and Swing in 2022, was it? Or yes, it was. This year they just added a Scream and Swing, and next year they're going to be adding a Log Flume. So yeah, yeah, looking forward to that. Um, it looks like it'll definitely be comparable to the Intamin Log Flumes, like the one found at Fantasia Land. Uh, do you know what it's called, Andrew? I have no idea. <laughs> I I have no idea, bro. <laughs> like, it looks like it'll have several airtime moments, maybe. Uh, a, a solid drop for a log flume. And it looks like it'll be a welcome addition to Six Flags. Or not Six, Six Flags. Flags. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, SeaWorld San Antonio. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh welcome to Six Flags San Antonio. <laughs> yeah, that, so. that one's already taken, I think. Uh, maybe. Uh, maybe. But, um, yeah. So it just looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, hopefully, uh, it could become like this. This park is really is just growing, and I feel like everything about it could just be so good. Like the upcoming years, because I know they have like a ton of space. So if they just really fill in that space, like they did with the Scream and Swing, and you know Texas Stingray, this park could really become something special. I mean, and I already love it. It's it's, a, it's already a great SeaWorld park in general. Yes, and I'm super hyped to go to it this summer. Yep. But moving on to our next bit of news, uh, this is at Epcot. We got Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. We got an opening date for this. It is opening on May 27th. Uh, Caleb, want to go off on this thing? Yeah, so this thing looks humongous as I watched the vertical construction of this and just seeing how big this building is, just for a size reference, it can fit three spaceship Earths inside of that building. Oh wow, I didn't even know that. That was insane. Like this coaster looks absolutely like insane. I'm so excited to see what they can do for it. Obviously, we uh, already speak a lot about this on the podcast, but still like maybe it could be the best uh definitely be the best coaster in my opinion 
maybe just the best ride in all of Disney World. It looks that good, and that space they have with it, it's just insane on how big it is. I mean, you got the main uh, old Universe of Energy uh, building. Um, you got the little section where it goes into the big building, and then you have that huge building, which is just absolutely massive. Um, I've been able to go like right next to that thing, like in the Epcot parking lot, and it just looks absolutely huge. I'm so pumped. Yes, I am so pumped as well. I think that this could definitely deliver on the Disney experience like Rise of the Resistance did with that spinning car aspect of it. How much it will be able to how much it will be able to add to the experience, like how much you'll be able to just see around you and just that backwards launch for a Disney coaster. I don't know how fast it'll be. But it definitely looks like it'll be pretty fast as that's it looks like that'll be the first launch on the coaster. Didn't you think don't you think that? Yeah, probably. But I know like a lot of the cast members I think are being able to uh ride this soon and hopefully I uh, just hopefully we'll get to get some thoughts on it. I know a lot of people are just so pumped for this and it really is just gonna be so good. I think it's Vacoma, right? Yes, it is a Vacoma coaster. I mean Disney loves their Vacomas, so uh, Vekoma really is just going off with everything they have. Like we just heard, like co- uh, what was it, flying cobras? Like Carolines, yes. Yeah, it's an old school Vekoma, but still the restraints are just. I think the restraints are more similar to like the new gen Vekomas, and they are just so comfy. Like I'll get to be riding like some of these Vekoma new gen coasters in Europe this summer. Like um, what is it, Light Coaster, Red Force? Uh, no, Red Force, but uh, Formula One, whatever that thing is called. Uh, what's that one, Energylandia? Um, Abysses. There you go. There's, there's Abysses, yeah. Uh, and there's that other one, too. Uh, the red one. I don't know what to say. But, um, yeah, all of these just look... Vekoma's just really going off. We love Vekoma now. Definitely okay. don't like the old school models, but now we do, especially with Disney and the ones they've been building in Europe. Yeah, the one you're thinking of, Andrew, the red one at Energylandia is Formula One. Yeah, I, I was getting mixed up with Formula Rosa and uh, Formula One, but... Um, yeah, the, the Vekoma's going off. They're really just being such a good manufacturer now. Like, like they could if I once I get to ride those rides, like they could go up my rankings like so much. Like, it just looks absolutely fantastic. Like that coaster, that drop, everything about it just looks so so good. But moving on to our next segment, uh, this segment is of course as with every episode, our ride rankings. Now, uh, this one will be a little different today because. Um, Caleb and I have little uh, debate of a differences in our uh, the ones we've done. So what I'll be doing, I'll be ranking uh, my favorites from ten to one. Uh, so my list, uh, just for disclaimer, my list can not contain defunct coasters, and it does group together a, a section of clones like the Batman clones that'll all be in one spot. But for Caleb, um, he's only written seven, and he will be uh, ranking. Um, some of defunct coasters, like the ones, the the dragon ones at Islands of Adventure. But uh, I guess, oh, Caleb, had anything else to say? Um, yeah, so this is our B&M invert uh, top tens. And yeah, I've only ridden seven B&M inverts. So um, that'll definitely be expanded on whenever we go to Texas. But currently, I've only ridden seven. So uh, that kind of hinders the... Uh, the list for me in this ride ranking let's uh go ahead with your 10 9 and 8 andrew yeah uh before we do that like <laughs> yeah it's just yeah there's uh, i feel like even if we have haven't run as much inverts um we still have like a solid just about the same like top five or whatever we've all ridden the best inverts so starting out on my number 10 we have silver bullet located at knott's berry farm uh this really really fun invert i really love this thing no it's not the most intense it's not the most extreme but you got some cool elements so you got that um uh some cool uh zero g rolls you got those really cool like like really uh, corkscrews that are not back-to-back but the in-between they have like a wave turn type element and those are so fun uh they really flow together so nicely and really silver silver bullet is just a fun coaster and you know i have experienced uh, night rides on this thing so um it really just bumps up a little bit higher than the other ones that would have been behind it but moving on to my number eight we have a whole set of clones these are the batman the ride clones now for where i rank these i did try to um you know, you know, just try to find the medium between the good ones and the bad ones. None of them are necessarily bad. It's just 
some of them, like in my case, the one at Over Texas and the one at Great Adventure, um, they are a little bit more rough than the others, so those are probably the worst, but comparing those to what like, in my opinion, the best ones are, like, the ones at Great America, over Georgia, and, yes, to Texas. I'm trying to find a medium in where I rank these, but here they are at number nine. Um, these things are just so intense. Everything about them just packs a huge punch. Uh, they are so fast. They pack in so many good whippy elements, and everything about these things are just so good that, though they may not be the biggest coasters, they really do pack a huge punch. But moving on uh, to my number eight, this time is my number eight, but uh, we have another coaster uh, located in California. This is Flight Deck, located at California's Great America. Uh, though it may be small, man, this thing is absolutely fantastic. You got some notable elements, such as that loop, you got some really cool, a uh, really cool zero G roll, and of course you got that helix just right over the water. Such an intense moment, and really everything about this coaster is just quality over quantity. Though maybe the shortest ride is still is absolutely fantastic. But now we're getting to where Caleb is. But my number seven is to start off. We have Great Bear located at Hershey Park. I, I cannot have enough to say about this coaster, though it is just a little bit short, but all the elements are so good. Um, that drop is probably the best drop on a BNM invert, even though it's way more unique than you would think compared to the other ones. Uh, everything about this ride is so fun. It can run really fast, like at night, and that thing is just so fantastic. I love Great Bear, and everything about it, especially being a Hershey Park, is just so fun. But finally, Caleb, what is your number seven? Yay, it's my turn. Uh, my number seven is going to be Hungarian Horntail, which was the uh, ice side to the fire and ice of Dragon Challenge. So I think I don't remember much from this invert. I just remember it was inferior to its fire side. But I remember it being a very intense, smooth, and graceful experience compared to its fireside. But um, yeah, it definitely is a great invert and sad to see it go. But you know, it created the, it paved the way for Hagrid's long name coaster. But uh, yeah, so that is a great coaster. And I think they definitely utilized the space that they had to their advantage. For that coaster yes but yeah I, I love that thing I, I remember I wrote I actually wrote both of them back in 2017 uh, right before they closed and I remember just being so sad that they closed because these clones were just so fine I loved all of them I mean yeah it makes sense in my opinion probably Haggard's is better than both of them and they really utilize the space well because Haggard's is a huge people eater so um, I mean, yeah, sad to see them go. I really love those those two rides, but still, Hagrid's, in my opinion, just a little bit better than them. But moving on to my number, what is it? My number six, we have a coaster located at Busch Gardens, Williamsburg. This is Alpengeist, otherwise known as Alpi. <laughs> and um, though it may be just a little bit sluggish, it really just is a huge invert. And so many of the elements can just be so fun. I love Alpengeist so much, and everything about it is just... Just really fun. Uh, the elements really flow together really nicely, and some of them are just snappy, even though it's a very graceful ride. But Caleb, what's your number six? So my number six is the Chinese fireball side of Dragon Challenge. Now again, I don't remember much. I just remember this one being a little bit more enjoyable and feeling like a little bit faster than the ice side of the dragons. But this one was just felt a lot more aggressive for some reason. I don't really know why, it just felt more intense um, from what I remember. But uh, yeah, this one definitely packed a punch along with the ice side. But again, sad to see this coaster go. But again, we got Hagrid's in its place. So, you know, uh, it's a good trade off. Yeah, I totally agree. But moving on to my number five, we have a coaster that really just nowadays has mixed opinions. And. Even though I still put it at the spot, I could see it being lower depending on the day it runs. Because some of the days, this thing could be pretty rough, which is just a little bit surprising knowing it's B&M. But uh, my number five is 
Banshee, as you all know, located at Kings Island. This coaster opened in 2014. I love this thing. Still, it could be a little bit rough, but that's really the only downside. Uh, the layout of this thing and the way it packs in so many good elements is just absolutely fantastic. You've got that um, one heartline roll. I think that's what it's called. And you got so many cool elements like the pretzel knot that really just make this coaster so good. And... Especially being at King's Island, it really is a gr one of their great coasters in their top five. Though, I wouldn't say it's in the top three. Uh, I don't think it is. It's still a fantastic coaster. So, Caleb, what's your number five? My number five is Raptor at Cedar Point. Now, again, this coaster to me feels like it's just... It's just underwhelming for me. I don't know why. I, I heard before going into it that it was a super intense and whippy B&M invert. When I went... I rode it in the afternoon, in the morning, and, you know, it just didn't deliver on both of those rides. You know, I rode in the back row and in the front row, and it just, you know, it it just was kind of underwhelming. The downwards helix wasn't as forceful as everybody says it was. The, tr the brakes, the mid-course brake run was hitting super hard that day, so maybe that could contribute to it. But uh, everything else just... You know, it kind of underwhelmed me because, you know, it just wasn't as intense as everybody says it was. And I was expecting it to be a really good invert, but it was just mediocre at best. Yeah, I completely disagree. That's why Raptor is taking my number four spot. Uh, speaking of Raptor, yeah, there we go. But still, um, this thing, uh, I kind of I, I, I kind of understand you and you saying it's not as good as you expected. I know... A lot of people, including me, really, really like this thing. I remember one time this coaster being my favorite invert, which that just shows you how good it is. It's so snappy, so many good elements to it, so intense. Um, that Cobra roll is fantastic, and the location. You cannot deny uh, that this location is absolutely spectacular, so stunning, especially with that repaint it got in 2017. It just, it just looked so good. And there's so many fantastic elements, so many fantastic and snappy and intense elements to it, like that uh, that helix towards the end. You got some great cobra rolls, not cobra rolls. You got that great cobra roll, and it's got some great corkscrews. And this ride, I just love it so much. I just everything about it is so good. I remember one time I also liked this thing better than Top Thrill Dragster, which think it'll get you a little infuriated caleb yeah it would i'm top throw dragster fanboy and i would agree with you as well that the corkscrews were definitely one of the highlights of the ride so was the cobra roll but uh, other than those i really didn't find any notable elements to it i think you just need to get a night ride yes but when i went cedar point only closed at like seven yeah yeah i mean that's that's cedar fair and during covid you know so <laughs> That's, I mean, COVID really affected all the, no, uh, the opening hours for these parks. But, um, what, uh, Caleb, what is your number three? My num number four. Sorry. My number four is Banshee at Kings Island. Now, this one I just rank a little bit higher than Raptor, just because it has some great elements, and I think the hang time on that final zero G roll, I think it's not a heartline roll. I don't think because it's not rotating around your heart. But, yeah, I find that one element to be really unique for a B&M invert, how slow it just goes through the element. It just is a fantastic way to end the ride, along with that pretzel knot. is really intense. And, yeah, I just find this coaster also, when I went, it was running really good, and it wasn't that rough at all compared to what people say it is. So, uh... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree. Like, I feel like it really depends. Like, you can either ride this thing and it being, like, super rough. Not super rough, but just being a little bit rough. Or you could ride it when it's running really smooth. It really depends on, you know, the day you go. But it really sucks, like, with King's Island. Um, a lot of their B&Ms do have a little bit of a rattle. Like, um, Banshee, obviously. Um, I mean, Diamondback has a tiny bit of a rattle, which is a little disappointing. And, of course, Orion. I mean, Orion is probably the smoothest of the bunch, but still, like... You can notice a slightest bit, uh, which is really unfortunate. But I think the whole uh, reason this is comes down to, I uh, think I think what I heard from someone like the soil or whatever at Kings Island is not as supportive as like some of the other parks. So that's probably why it's, they're just have a, a little bit rougher because they kind of sink down into the ground a little bit more. I would completely disagree with that, Andrew. I found Banshee and Orion to be super smooth. Diamondback, yes, I definitely noticed a rattle whenever I rode it, but that's the only B&M I rode that actually I noticed a rattle on. 
So I think I would disagree with you on that. Yeah, but still, like, it's. I think that's the thing. Still, I think it's still true with like the soil at Kings Island being like that. But it really, obviously, said it just really depends on the day you get to uh, go to Kings Island. Because if you if this is your home park or you've ridden go there more times, you can really. I think you can really see uh, the full story of that situation. But um, coming in at my at number three. This one is actually not in the United States. I've never mentioned this on the podcast. I never mentioned that I've actually gone here. Um, this is Nemesis, located at Alton Towers, which I know it's a little weird to have a coaster out of the U.S. in uh, this list, but still, uh, Nemesis is just so flipping good. It interacts with the terrain. The theming is just so fantastic. I feel like I've never really like gone in depth on this coaster, like in a conversation or podcast, but. Um, yeah, I love this thing. I know a lot of people really rave about it, and you know, it is getting that new retrack from what I've heard. Uh, maybe just maybe it'll improve the ride experience. Even though, like before, like when I rode it in 2018, absolutely hauling. Some of the elements were fantastic, especially with it interacting with the terrain and that layout. Especially for being an invert, it's just so wacky, but it's just so just so flipping good. But Caleb, what is your number three? My number three is Batman the Ride at Six Flags over Georgia. Now I know, Andrew, I just saw your reaction. It wasn't good whenever I said that. But um, yeah, this inverted coaster is super intense. Last time I rode it, it was running so good. And just the amount of just intense forces <laughs> that it has is just so great. Uh, it was so whippy. I was on an NC. Yeah. I was on an end seat in the in towards the back, and oh my gosh, I was pinned to my seat more than I wasn't. I mean, I mean yeah, I feel like on any invert, like the best rows are like back far left or back far right. Like every like on Montu Afterburn, like or Batman the Ride, that's the best row by far. Yep, I'd agree. Just just getting on the far side of the train is actually is really fun too. Because you just get whipped through some of those elements on the far side because of the train just being like whipped over by like, I don't know how to describe it. It's like almost like a circular type thing to where the outside get more, the outside of the train gets more whip than the inside of the train. I don't know how to explain that, but it just does, you know? So uh, yeah, that's why we prefer outer seats. Yes, but um, yeah, especially on the big, like the best coasters, that's where, that's the seat to ride. But moving on to the top two, my number two is a coaster that I, I just may, uh, it's, I, I'm really debating which is better, this or Nemesis, but uh, I chose this over Nemesis. This is Afterburn, located at Carowinds. Um, we just may be speaking about this ride a little bit more in the in the podcast because we just may have a ride opinion on this, but still, um, we just got to ride this on the Caro trip. Got night rides. It was so it was so fantastic. Um, everything about it, it's just I feel like as I rode it, a lot of the elements are more elevated, so it kind of feels more like kind of just kind of a Batman clone, especially on that like zero G roll. That kind of feels like a Batman clone, but still, um, this thing is so powerful, so intense. Uh, the the Batwing, fantastic. That that zero G roll, of course, just so whippy. Uh, the corkscrew, the ending helix, so intense. Even though it may be just a little short, in my opinion, at least. Um, Afterburn is still fantastic, and I love this thing two bits. But Caleb, what's your number two? My number two, which some of you might be disappointed with, is Montu at Bush Gardens, Tampa. Now again, I just, I just don't. Here's what I'll say. I just don't feel like this is like as whippy as my number one is. That's all what it comes down to is I expect some of these elements on Montu to be super intense and whippy, but they just don't deliver in some departments. Not ditching Montu at all, but that's the only flaw I can find with this coaster, and that's why it's at number two compared to my number one. But yes, this coaster just has so many good, intense elements packed into its seven inversions and intense layout. Yeah, I mean, speaking of Montu, that's my number one. I mean, as you all know, probably expected it, but still. Um, I think it's just really crazy to me that Montu is my number one, and I still just still haven't gotten a night ride on it, which... Even though I've gotten night rides and Afterburn, like I still like Montu better, which that just shows you how good Montu is. 
Um, I, I definitely do disagree with you, Caleb. I definitely think it is really whippy, and the layout is just so long, and everything about it is just so good. Um, you got the trenches, you got the whippy elements, you got the speed, you got the color scheme, which I actually think is really cool, and the theming along with this is just super cool, but... Ending out the ride ranking, what is your number one, Caleb? My number one is Afterburn at Carowinds. Now, this ride, just sit in the back row, right seat, and you'll understand my opinion on this. That last corkscrew feels like your neck is about is uh, is going to crack. I mean, seriously. Whenever I rode this the first time, I literally just felt my neck like crack so hard that it just hurt so bad, but it, in a good way. But yeah, this ride just, this ride is so much, how should I say this? It's so much more like intense in my opinion than Montu is. Like there are so many good intense moments on this ride. Not judging Montu that there isn't, but this ride just has a lot uh, more forcefulness to it. If that's the words I'm trying to find. Um, But yeah, this ride just is super just super intense and that back row right seat is just where it's at on this ride and you'll thank me later if you ride it there yeah same with Mahatu. <laughs> but still um yeah both these embers are fantastic i think it's a really good transition uh, for our ride opinion of the day we have afterburn i think we've already said everything we need to say about this um obviously we just wrote it so we have a more of a fresh opinion but so good. Something I just I haven't even noticed uh, mentioned yet, but the color scheme of, of Afterburn, I just love that thing so much. Yes, it may need to repaint, but still, with the theme it goes to, like that that color scheme is just so fantastic. I love that gray and blue color scheme on Afterburn. I just think that's one of the most cleanest color schemes you could have, don't you think? Yeah, I feel, I feel like it's more basic, but like it kind of goes along with like the dirty, muggy, or whatever like theme that like. Afterburn has it's more of like a plane you can see it with the theming around the coaster and it really I think it just looks good like Afterburn like you ride Afterburn after the burn <laughs> that was like the most random thing but still um, Afterburn is fantastic but uh, let's go through our um, our scores and our ranks for this thing um, my score of Afterburn I'm really fluctuating between this but for me it's probably a nine um, it's not the most perfect it is a little short and some of the elements are not absolutely insane but still i adore this coaster i've loved this thing for so long since i rode it first in 2016 and for my rank um i'll probably give it uh my number 46 spot um i still love it for being 46 i think it's still really high but still i love afterburn two bits and so much about it is just so good but what about you caleb so for me afterburn is a 9.5 and the only reason it is is just because of its length and because it is a little bit rough around the edges, a little bit here and there. But after that, it's just so good. Just perfect for an inverted coaster. And that's why I give it a 9.5 out of 10. And then for my rankings as well, this ride comes in at number 21 for me. Now, this this is just a little bit higher than Monsu. Literally, I have Afterburn. I think I have one other coaster below it. And then I have Monsu. But still... This ride just, I can't say enough about this invert. It's just so good. Yeah, uh, I mean, in my opinion, inverts aren't, like, my go-to ride. Like, if I were to, like, they're not my go-to, like, type of ride. I love inverts, but I feel like they don't, like, the thing I really like most about coasters is the airtime and, like, intensity. I feel like sit-down coasters, in my opinion, are just way much, way better than um, inverted coasters. Um, don't you agree? Like, airtime, come on. Yeah, I would agree too. Like you would run to a B&M Hyper instead of a B&M Invert, right? Yeah, like I would, I would go to Florida. I would rather ride Mako than Montu. I love both, but still, I would rather ride Mako because of that Florida airtime, you know. But in Carowind's case, would you rather ride Intimidator or Afterburn? Now that's a different story. <laughs> Intimidator's so mid. Like, come on, it's like it's so mid. So, but which would you go with though? Oh, Afterburn by far. Like Afterburn, come on. I would agree with you on that. Like, yeah. if it's a mid-tier uh, hyper, I would go with the elite uh, invert, invert <laughs> over yeah. the hyper, over the mid-tier hyper. But an elite hyper over an elite invert, I'd go the elite hyper all the way. Yeah, oh yeah. Like, yeah, like I said, Matsu versus Mako. But still, 
Uh, speaking of like Carowinds, like we, I think Caleb, you had two of these, but um, uh, they have these really cool milkshakes. Like they are so flipping delicious. Uh, they're very similar to like um Carowinds, uh, not Carowinds. They're very similar to the Toothsome Factory at, at City Walk. Uh, they have some really good milkshakes, but um, I think it was like a blue. Un what was it? Blue, blue unicorn or something? Yes, it was called the blue unicorn that we had, and it was basically a like raspberry cotton candy like milkshake. With like this like colorful purple whipped cream on the top that just topped it all off with like an ice cream cone and then a cup like covered in just sprinkles all the way around. Yeah, if I were you, I'd just go search it up. I mean, uh, and the, the real cool thing about it, I think it all uh, donates to a charity. What, what was the charity again? It was Make-A-Wish. Yeah, make a wish. Um, if you buy that, the whole twelve dollars you spend on a super little milkshake, uh, at least it goes to a good cause. So I definitely recommend. Anytime you go to Carolyn's, definitely try it out. It's also delicious, cotton candy flavored, so flipping fantastic. And Carolyn's has like great food. Come on, we're just ranting about how good Carolyn's is. Uh, Caleb, you didn't go this time, but uh, they have the Blue Ridge Grill or whatever. The sm uh, forgot the name of it, but still, uh, they have like such good like what was it, mac and cheese and uh, chicken or whatever it was so nice there's a lot of areas in carowinds that are just so cool like uh the county fair blue ridge junction like planet camp snoopy those areas are just fantastic yes i'd agree with you as well and i did not eat the food with you because i was getting an evac off of flying cobras yeah yeah let's go off on that caleb you go <laughs> yeah so uh what happened was that um i had a uh an ada pass and so they told me to go ahead on the train i sat down i locked my restraint in and then i heard we're having technical difficulties here at flying cobras so i'm just sitting there with my restraint locked nobody else is in the train everybody else in the station and queue has left because they think this is a lengthy delay so i'm still sitting there maintenance comes by is about to send me in the test train or an empty train and they see a restraint down so they look down there and then they see me they're like shocked to see me so uh then they had to uh i was sitting there for like 10 minutes and then they finally got me out of there literally and then like two minutes later i was already back in the train before they even sent a test run and then everybody else came back and and then we got to ride but yeah I just went through the whole evac procedure through that whole time and uh yeah it was a weird experience but um yeah it was very interesting to have that experience yeah i feel like it's gonna be so fun like throughout we like go through the time and seasons of this podcast like anytime we go on a like a trip or something and we go to a park we're gonna have so many cool stories like that y'all are gonna hear like Hopefully y'all are enjoying it. Like these stories, I, I think def we definitely think that they're really cool. Um, there's definitely like, so many more stories we have to tell. Like from all the parks Caleb has visited, we've gone to together, and I feel like I have so many stories as well. I mean, just stay tuned for like the the rest of the episodes. Um, we're already in like se this is our seventh episode of this of this um podcast, and you know I think we're already coming like towards the time when like. Maybe not yet, definitely not yet, but maybe we'll start a new season soon, which to think that we're already getting towards the times of like starting new seasons, I think it's just absolutely mind-boggling that we're already in this far. Yes, it is definitely mind-boggling that we are. And speaking of mind-boggling, what did we hear at Bucky's, Andrew? Um, <laughs> wait, wait, what was it? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> yeah, so we step out of the car, right, and we see a lady vlogging about... <laughs> how like it's so funny it's she so was, funny like, she said whenever we like she was she pulled out her phone and she had somebody else with her she started filming and she said i'm here at bucky's to see who is like the fattest like people here it it, it was a, it was in a little bit of a different wording i think it's maybe too explicit for the podcast but still it was so funny we just started laughing it was fantastic <laughs> like the stories you hear at bucky's come on it was it was fantastic uh, as you said earlier bucky's is the place to be especially when we go to like texas oh imagine if we get to go like there and like we get to do i want to try like all the bucky's in texas we won't be able to do it but if we got to like go to the original bucky's and got to go to all of them that would be so cool 
Yeah, that's a little bit extensive, Andrew. I think going to every single Bucky's in Texas. Now, the original, I think, could possibly be an idea, but every single one? Are you serious? I mean, yeah, definitely not every single one. Uh, there are some ones. I think there's one in Alabama that we haven't been to. Uh, it's near Mobile. Mobile? What am I saying? Mobile, Alabama. Uh, so they have a Bucky's there. They have, like, I actually know, like, they have, like, 35, I think, as locations in Texas. They've gotten two in Alabama. Two in Florida, and yeah, two in Georgia, and uh, I just like, something we both really want, like, if they put a Bucky's, like, where we live, it's in between Tampa and Orlando, and there's an interstate in between that called I-4, so let's say they put a Bucky's, like, on I-4, that would be fantastic, like, that, I would want to work there, like, hands down. Yeah, he would want to work there, I live a little bit too far away from there to work there, but, uh, yeah, that would be a great location to just hang around for a bit, you know, get some photos maybe of stuff. You know, Andrew said he would work there if he could because um, they actually start really good at Bucky's for uh, for a first job. So, yeah, that, that would be great to have one here. Uh, I don't know if they'll do it or not, but, hey, you never know. I mean, I've always thought it's just such a great location. Like, you know... Posner Park, y'all probably don't know about it, but Caleb, like, Posner Park, like, that's a really cool, nice area around here that that would be a great location for Bucky's because there's so much business there. I mean, yes. There really is. Posner Park, formerly known as Boardwalk and Baseball. Exactly. They used to have a park there, which, you know, it did kind of fail. So that may not be the best location, but still. Um, I, mean, I think Bucky's would be great here, but. As I, as I said, there's so many stories we have to tell, and I'm just so excited, like, especially when we go on this Texas trip, like, it's going to be fantastic. There's going to be so much buckies, so much stuff to do. Uh, we're recording this, like, in person right now compared to the last couple episodes, so if we get to record this in person, like, on the trip, that'll be so fun. But, um, we've been going unscripted, but moving on to our next segment. Now, this segment is a new segment, uh, that I came up with while on my stepdad's podcast, What the Diz. And so, uh, shout out to him for giving me this idea, but um, this is reimagined. So what we'll do on this segment is we will reimagine rides and think about a new theme, possibly a new layout to make the ride better, and give parks feedback on their theming, layout, and so on for each coaster that we do on this segment. But this week's episode... Our first reimagined will be Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket. Yes, sir. Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket. As you all know, not my favorite coaster. Not my favorite coaster. Caleb, you love it. I like it. I think it's good. But, uh, yeah, what will we retheme it to, though? I know. I, I, there's so many things you could do with it. Like, you could either just, t- like, retract the whole thing. Maybe use, like, you know how they did with Hulk, like... They just retract the whole thing, but they could do that with this, except make it even better. It's a huge pot of land, and I feel like with a whole new like way they're going with this area, there's so many themes that they can do, uh, but let's go through these themes. The first one is Transformers. Now, obviously, you do have Transformers, the other dark ride, uh, right, down the, right down the park, which is very, very close to it, but... What if they just made this whole area just a Transformers area and made Hollywood Pride Rocket just like Transformers? Like, I know they're doing the Clone of Hulk uh, at the other Universal Studios park. I think that's what it is, right? Yes, it is in Universal Studios. What is it? Singapore, I think it is, where yeah. they have the uh, the Hulk clone, which is the Transformers uh, themed ride. But uh, yeah, I think that would be a really cool idea to have Transformers as a uh, Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket just have a whole storyline to it and just playing in your in your ears and maybe having Linkin Park a little bit to it uh, I think that would be fantastic yeah like they just have an on like on ride soundtrack great theme like imagine how good like that soundtrack could be on a, such a good coaster and if they made this coaster like so much better this could be so good it could be definitely be the best ride in all of studios definitely not islands that's for sure but uh, it would still be absolutely fantastic. So that's our first theme, and maybe they just retheme that whole area of Transformers in the queue and the theming. Maybe they could put theming throughout the ride. I think that would be really cool. But for another option, uh, these are definitely not in order. 
of our favorite ones that we could do. But another one is probably the least likeliest. We just we're just throwing this in. Um, this is Back to the Future. Um, Caleb, want to take this one on? Yes. Yeah, so Back to the Future, as you all know, the Minion or not Minions. I'm sorry. <laughs> the Simpsons ride used to be themed to Back to the Future. So we looked up different ideas, went back and forth on different ideas, and we thought Back to the Future would be really cool to bring back in a new light. In in Rip Ride Rocket, it would be perfect for this theming or p- for this theme. And so we just we decided to put maybe put the trains as like the DeLorean, maybe um, have like a little storyline to it. You know, the whole thing. Uh, maybe repaint it to like a grayish type color. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like this would be more of a theme to where they like don't retrack it. They just use the same layout, but just uh, retheme it. Uh, retheme it. Uh, they could. Ha- I would adore this thing if they had the Back to the Future soundtrack throughout the ride, like going back in time. That would be in- fantastic. Like, imagine you're going up the vertical lift hill. You're theming all around you, and they're playing that music. Oh, that would be so cool! And like they have different ar- interactive elements on the break on the mid course break runs, and have some new theming, a new color scheme, which I think they could be like do really cool. Maybe like a, a blue gray theme, like a gray theme would be just so cool. But didn't we just talk about this for Afterburn? Yeah, yeah, we, <laughs> we kind of did. <laughs> That's true. But like gray themes on co- like gray like colors on coasters. It could either be done, like, really bad or really right. I feel like most of the time it's really right, but still, like, Back to the Future on Rip Ride Rocket, I feel like that would be the least in- least expensive option, and they could do so many cool stuff. The soundtrack, and obviously, like Caleb said, a car is the theme to DeLoreans. Like, that would be so flipping fantastic. Don't you agree? Yes, I would agree, but our next opinion on this would be a minions coaster to tie it in with the nearby despicable me minion mayhem now we don't know exactly how this you know would go but i think we would keep it the same colors maybe but um yeah would you keep it the same colors the red and yellow uh eh, i don't know i feel like i feel like a better color would be like maybe just blue track and like very very dark gray supports or just maybe a little bit of yellow to it uh probably not because it would stand out more like you probably wouldn't want it to stand out but still like blue like navy blue or whatever and like dark gray that would be really cool yeah it would be uh kind of like montu's color scheme a little bit that's what i think it it might look like i don't know about the, like the mustard yellow i don't know how good that would be but still like uh what like the main reason this would be a good fit for this area I, this is personally my um least favorable option but why this could be a good fit is because obviously you have uh, minion mayhem but also they have the new ride that they're building right next to minion mayhem so that could be minions possibly possibly or villain con that's what i think it is but they could have that minion mayhem and this new coaster which you know people love the minions so if they had a whole land like in the front of the park developed uh, towards the minions um i think that would be really cool i think super silly fun land would be a good idea to name it I mean, yeah. I mean, that makes sense. But I feel like it's more of like a kitty area, you know? Yeah. Uh, maybe retheme it to like, you know, villain con- or uh, the uh, what is it called? The uh, the villains head or the villains association headquarters or something like that. I don't know what it's called. I don't remember what it's called in Despicable Me. Villain too. con. No, it's in Despicable Me too, where they have like they track down villains or the. Uh, what oh i can't remember what it's called but yeah that's uh you're probably screaming at me right now thinking about that name but uh yeah i would say retheme the land of that area because that area looks very modern very or that building that they have it in looks very nice and modern and stuff like that but uh yeah uh our next theming idea is for fast and furious yeah, I know some of you may be a little bitter towards this, especially with uh, a name we don't. Uh, we shouldn't probably talk about because it's so bad. But uh, that is um, Fast and Furious Supercharged. Which imagine if they just demolished that ride and then just made this Fast and Furious. I feel like this would be way better because like cars and stuff like that would be really cool. Like uh, I don't have that much to say about it, but like because I've only watched one of the Fast and Furious movies, but like 
if the, it would be really cool if they had a coaster theme to Fast and Furious because they could do so much theming with it. They could probably have uh, music throughout the ride, just like uh, the uh, all the other options. And I feel like Fast and Furious would be uh, more of a refresh on the brand of that uh, Fast and Furious. So um, we'll just have to wait and see. I think you could actually just keep the color scheme and keep the idea of Rip Ride Rocket, but just retheme it to Fast and Furious. Like you could still keep that music. You can keep the theme from Fast and Furious Supercharged and bring it over to Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket. I think that would be a great idea. Maybe have some fire effects in there, like Bizarro was that great adventure. Uh, maybe just incorporate that type of stuff in there, like an action-packed scene, and still have that music blaring because on the party bus, you know, at Fast and Furious Supercharged, you have that music playing. So it would really enhance the experience too. So, uh, yeah, I what mean, do you think of that. Yeah. Um, I feel like one of the things I really like want this, since I want this thing to be, uh, it's hard to say, like, I kind of want this thing to be retracked, like completely retracked, because in my opinion, it's not the best ride. Um, a lot of the elements are a little bit rough. I think it really needs to retract because it is rough. Um, we, we saw the same thing with Hulk when they got, it got retracted since it was becoming rough, but... Uh, now it's way better since it was retracted, and um, I feel like Rip Ride Rocket is the next one on the list to get this re like brand new refurbishment. And I hope it, they could really just maybe add, take out some of the Midcourse Break Runs, because um, obviously those are not the best. But uh, like retrack it for the most part, like completely the same, but add some way better elements, make it smoother, and probably some better restraints. That would definitely help. Yeah, I have no problem with the restraints, Andrew, since I'm kind of a skinnier guy to it but um yeah i think it definitely could uh deserve <laughs> deserve that treatment to the ride it definitely needs it a lot are you calling me fat no <laughs> yes because i'm not fat i'll say that <laughs> but, i'm just calling you fatter than me i guess i guess you could say that let's still um I'm a twig. If you didn't know that, yeah, yeah. Caleb's the biggest twig ever. <laughs> not not big, not big at all. I take it back. <laughs> he's he's a, such a twig, but still, um, yeah. So that's it for the reimagined segment. Uh, definitely let us know. Um, if you like this, uh, I think it'd be really cool. Like, I feel, this could, this is like our one like unique segment, other than maybe just like ride opinion. But like, yeah, definitely a lot of rides out there could definitely use like a reimagining to them, especially Rip Ride Rocket, which for being universal, it's way more likely they will actually act upon it, just like they did with Hulk. So, uh, really excited to see if like they can eventually do that. But moving on uh, to our next segment, we got the infamous unpopular opinion. Caleb, let's we'll start off with you. So my unpopular opinion, after my visit to Six Flags over Georgia, I think Goliath is a mid-tier hyper. Just because Boo. of how rough it has gotten over the years, I mean, it it definitely was r not running its smoothest. Like, I think it gave me a headache after like five rides on it. So it was it was very rough, and it was also cold, so that may have contributed to it. But yeah, at night I marathoned this, and it still was very very rough. I almost felt like I had like a headache or a bloody nose or something just from just how much shaking this ride had. I mean, coming back to like this really relates back to the fact that anytime you ride a coaster, it really depends on like the day you rode it. It just all depends on like what your experience is. Like for me, every time I go ride this thing, though it may be just a little bit rough, I think it still is so good. It's one of my favorite hypers out there. Like it has such good airtime, in my opinion. Some of the best quality airtime you could find on a BNM Hyper, and really, especially during that helix, the intensity of this thing is absolutely fantastic. I mean, I know like you think it's a little bit rough. I think it's probably like downgrades for you, but do you th do you, you know think it has airtime, right? It does have a solid amount of airtime. Yeah, especially oh, don't even get me started like that. Uh, one element before the end, like. The return trip on those small bunny hills. There's that too, but like that one element right before the break run, like you get whipped, especially you're in the back seat. Yeah, I would agree with that. And also on uh, that downward double helix, I was graying out every ride. It was running so fast, but super rough for a trade off. Like night rides on this thing are just flipping fantastic. Like, I feel like I say that with all night rides, the only night rides I don't like is like Great Pumpkin Coaster. <laughs> but still, um, yeah, night rides on this thing are still fantastic. 
back seat if you have room in the back seat those airtime hills are lethal like there's so many of them especially on their return trip like caleb said uh those back-to-back -back airtime hills just fantastic i love goliath i think it's like my it's either my third or my fourth favorite behind candemonium and mako and intertwining with diamondback i know you like diamondback better but still uh still absolutely fantastic hyper uh even though you know you don't agree that's going along with the whole unpopular opinion thing even though you think it's mid-tier but speaking of mid a coaster that i think is mid is i'm so afraid to say this x2 no <laughs> you've never written it come on i know but it, i've heard it's super intense and just in super out of control experience I know, it's just, I don't know, I feel like it's not my type of ride, I mean, it's just, it's super cool, but I feel like it's just, it's fun and stuff, but it's not, like, as insane, in my opinion, as some people really t uh, say it out to be, I mean, still, uh, this is probably my farthest away in popular opinion, I still absolutely love this ride, but no way does it rank in my top 25, um, even if it is smooth, I don't think it's that good i think it's just not as insane as some other coasters even though i haven't done them uh Ajanica and dino conda just look so much better which i mean who knows uh they look absolutely insane i don't know how much i like those but um caleb i know you haven't done it but like what do you think i think it again looks super intense and super super good just a face down drop it's kind of like a dive coaster drop almost but it like it's almost like a sky coaster too it's like a dive and a sky coaster combined because you're facing straight down towards the ground on those drops and just flipping out of control so i just think it looks super insane something that i do think is insane uh caleb you know there's that thing at six flag over texas on uh the sky screamer they have like that thing that one like unique experience where it's kind of like a sky coaster i think is that right is that right Yes, where you can lay down and ride the skyscraper. That I, I want to do that so bad. It's like an isn't an upcharge. I think it is. No, I don't. Oh, it isn't. I don't think it is. I think it's just there. Yeah, I mean, it's. it's I I want to do that so bad because it looks absolutely terrifying. Like, even just sitting up there, like, on a normal skyscraper ride, that's terrifying in of itself. And even just doing that, like, where you're just flying, just looks. Yeah, it looks insane. I bet when we go, the line's going to be, like, super long. Don't you agree? Yeah, because the slow dispatches of six flags, you know what I mean? Especially with only being, it's not like two people? Yeah, I think it's two people. Yeah, so, I mean, who knows? I'm, I just want to do that so bad. I like, t even though it's, like, two people per ride cycle, I mean, it's still, it's so worth it. It's, it's so worth it. Like, I, I just can't believe just being able to do that. It looks absolutely insane but moving on to our last segment of the episode here we have our ride bracket now last time uh, we put it from what was it eight coasters to four now we're putting it from four coasters to two so uh, i'll just go through this again uh, we'll go through this every episode um we have four coasters now um and uh, we will vote uh, we have two matchups now uh, we will vote between those two on which one is better, and depending if it's both of us agree, it'll move on to the next round. But if both of if one of if both of us disagree, um, we will move this on to um, our Instagram, my Instagram, uh, Coaster Thrills, where you can vote. Uh, depending, where you can vote if it's a tie for us, you can vote, and you, the viewer, can make sure that your favorite ride between the two moves on. But moving on. To our first matchup, we have a good one today, folks. We have El Toro versus Maverick. What is your opinion, Caleb? I think El Toro looks a lot better than Maverick does because I've ridden Maverick. It is super snappy, super intense, super forceful, super good on those launches, such good airtime moments. But El Toro just looks to have a lot stronger airtime moments, and the restraints on El Toro are definitely very minimalistic compared to Maverick's. So, yeah, that's why I think El Toro is better. You know, that, that's one of my, I very much, uh, very prize my unpopular opinion that El Toro is not in my top 25 because, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of El Toro, so that's why I am taking Maverick over El Toro. It's Maverick overall, 
is way high in my rankings. I absolutely adore Maverick. It is, oh, it is so good. Like, and even co like being compared this to El Toro, um, I think Maverick is just so much better. So snappy. Maverick has really has anything you can want in any coaster. But uh, since it is a tie between us, you, the viewer, gets to go vote on the Coaster Thrills Instagram. Which one is better? So right when this episode goes out, you will have 24 hours to vote and. I'm really interested to see how this is, because both these coasters are absolutely fantastic, but sadly, just sadly in my opinion, I think El Toro will pull away with this one, just because, like, some people love that ride, but just, just keep this in mind, I hope Maverick wins. But, moving on to our second matchup, the final matchup of the bracket of this episode. Yes, we have Stormrunner versus the one, the only... Velocity coaster located at Universal Islands of Adventure. I'm going Velocity. I'm going Velocity coaster. Come on. <laughs> I feel that, that that nothing could go against that. I mean, come on. I think Velocity coaster is the favorite to win this matchup. Me too. I mean, the final matchup is either going to be Velocity coaster versus El Toro or Maverick. Which, oh, that is going to be such a good matchup. Like, it's insane. I think Velocity coaster is going to win this. I hope so, but I think it's, if it's if it's El Toro versus Velocity, I mean, that could be more of a matchup than we think. It could be. It could be a lot closer now. Are we going to let the viewers vote on that, or are we going to do the same thing? Oh, for what? What do you mean? The last bracket. I don't know, but y'all will have to wait till the next episode to find out. So that'll be the end of episode 7 of the Coasters Unscripted Podcast. Hope y'all enjoyed. Um... Uh, we have a we had a fun time uh, making this episode. It was really fun. We had a blast. Hope y'all did too. Um, thank y'all, uh, whoever did, for staying to the end. Um, it's been a fantastic uh, on how y'all have been. The viewers have been absolutely fantastic. So Caleb, any last words? Yes, thank you guys for listening to this whole episode, and just make sure to follow me and Andrew on Backyard Thrills and Coaster Thrills. And our Coasters Unscripted Podcast Instagram page as well. And Andrew, you want to end it? Okay, I'm going to end it. What's what, what's a final word? I'm trying to think of a final word. Um, hmm. Puck. So that'll end it. Sure. Sure. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed.